Hello everyone. So uh, here's a uh, some idea for you folks wanting to make some horns you need through the extrusion through curve method that you have on Maya. So why do you you know uh, I want to make some horns you know for ZBrush to make a female demon character uh, you know um, sculpting and such and I found you know it's much easier to use it through Maya. You know, uh, to extrude, uh, you know, use this method and this workflow. All right, uh, so how do you do that first is, okay, first thing first, let's say, you know, we have the classical idea of what um, a, a horn is. Uh, first, I press a space bar to go to the side view here, you know, and then, you know, click here and go to your side view. And then go in here to create, curve to use, all right. And then we come here, click in these. You don't need to, you know, be too much, uh, you know, perfectionist with this curve because, you know, once you're happy with the tool, you can just press Q, go to selection mode, and then you have this curve, right? Uh, if you press one, it's not smooth, divided, but then press three, it's the, there's this, um, you know, preview. You can you know, right click here and go to control vertex. As you can see the, here, these control vertexes, all right, these purple points control the flow of the curve. For example, let's say I want to, you know, uh, change these and do stuff like this. See, the, you're reshaping the curve. I'm like refine it, sort of. So once you're like, uh, happy with the curvature of your horn, you know, it should be something like this. Remember that, you know, um, before we do this method, I like to scale up, so, you know, we could scale this up a little bit, but, you know, size doesn't really matter once we export these as uh, .lbj files to ZBrush. You understand why soon. So, anyway, uh, you could <clears throat> could also make the horn a little bit like these, you know, if you want. You could, you could. You could always, you know, come back here and stuff. But anyway, anyway point is, there. Uh, now that we have these, right? Let me pull it on up. I don't have to. Now that we have the curve, you could, you know, also change it on different axes so like this you could make your horn go like this too if you want but we're going to stay simple I made some other horns here which I'm going to show you later but I want to show you the main method before you go there so you know, let me just refine it a little bit more okay gotcha now uh, the, the, the important thing to you to have in consideration is the base mesh or the primitive, let's say a cylinder right here that he created, which we're gonna use, you know, it's going to shape the most of the shape of the horn. So it's going to be pretty much uh, a cylindrical and really smooth horn. You, you could always, you know, uh, come here and change. Some horns have more of a pentagonic or even hexagonic shape here you know this is a hexagon and you know, control redo here this is a pentagon but we're going to stay with a cylinder for now so what you do is press e to rotate and then press j then you know it's going to snap like this and then you have the orientation of your 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 horn i like to you know make the curve go straight out this main center point here you know, I find it to be best. Uh, unfortunately, snapping isn't working, so I'm, you know, releasing J and rotating just like this. Okay. After you have the horn, you have to put into consideration the base of the horn, all right? This method, all right, it's going to do pretty much what? You, you, uh, you know, pick up the faces and extrude along the curve. But, you know, uh, before I do that, actually, let me correct these things. Uh, don't want the radius to be bigger, no. Well, you could make a really, you know, tech and really big base horn here, but maybe not for me. And then, you know, we can change the height. 
So it's thinner here. It, it, in my opinion, it, it, this method works better once you have a thinner uh, horn here. And the, the reason for that is, I will explain real soon. Okay, let me just, you know, get this up. Well, how to do that is you can, you know, just click here, select all the faces, right? I think, you know, you could go to side, but, you know, sometimes uh, it's better to just get the right angle and then you could press control and drag and, and click, right? And then you unselect these faces and you just with these faces. You don't want to, you know, select any other faces. Otherwise, it's going to extrude these ones too, and your horn's going to, you know, look all messed up. Then after that, press uh, shift, continue to select this, and then you, what it means is you select both the faces and this curve here. And then after all, what we can do is can come here to the extrude too, or I think uh, we see item mesh, then extrude or control E is the, I'm going to use, you know, control E. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. Then we have this context menu here. What you're going to want to do is buff up the divisions and there you go. You have your extrusion to your line. But keep in mind some one, one important thing. Here's this is the outliner, right? For you know, for you, uh, the folks that you don't know, it exhibits everything you have in the scene. This is the curve here. If you delete the curve or if you get rid of it, you know your horn, your extrusion through the curve is gone. So this this is why I grew all these horns here. As you can see, for example, here I have the curve, which originated the extrusion through the curve and the polygons themselves. But if you export just this, it works just fine. I tested the mesh, you know, it's all right. <clears throat> so after I have this, we can, you know, close the, uh, hang, hang on, the, we can open the attribute editor. And then you should see something like this, poly extrude face, then the number of times that it already is like, whoa, 38 times already. So uh, the, the important parts in which you need to consider here are pretty much just the division, but you know, we started with the, in the context menu of the division already. And then what you have is you have the taper curve and poly extrude curve attributes. You know, you, you can just click here, taper and voila, you pretty much have already a horn here, but I really don't like the way, you know, the Maya is getting to, let me show you here outside view. It's getting to, you know, pressing forward to wireframe mode. It extrude, like, it, um, how can I say, you know, uh, how, how it diminishes through the curve, you know, the how it scales down. So you can always change that, you know. Let me just, you know, put a shader mode here too. You can always click here back and, you know, put back taper to one, which is the default one. And you could always come here to taper curve. This is the, you know, the, the way to change that I suggest you use. Then what you can do with this here, um, uh, I would need to decrease a little bit so you guys can see how it changes. Let me try here. Okay. Let me adjust here as you can see if i go down this way i can't have much more control of how the horn is extru um, extruded along the curve so i could you know i want a horn that's thicker here uh, up to here and then he diminishes uh, very uh, suddenly from this point on so what you need to do is you go really really slow here and up this and you know try to maintain some sort of angle here so it doesn't do this sharp as you can see here uh change right and it's kind of hard you know you need to eyeball it well you know to see it and then you know you can keep doing it until you find the perfect setup that you want and then, you know, uh, as, as you want, as you can see, I'm making, making much more sharp decline here because that's really what I want. Okay. Uh, and then after that, okay, we can make this one like this. Uh, if you want to like deselect some, you know, get rid of the some, you can always click here like this, right? 
and get rid of some. Maybe there's too many points here. Uh, there you go. This is pretty much what I want. But let me pull another horn here. Yes, this is where I like it. And then if you go through here, you should see the horn taking shape. Now, I uh, press 3 to, you know, to do a preview on how the, you know, adding subdivisions will look like. This is one, this is three. As it's a cylindrical shape, it's a smooth one. There's no creases, no nothing. It's a pretty smooth one. But I don't like, you know, the shape these here. Let me, you know, change a little bit here. Okay, now I remember like, um, some of you might, you know, want not to have a sharp horn. If that's understandable, uh, you know, uh, if you want, if you want not a sharp horn, you know, with this kind of rounded up, you know, uh, horn here, you could always live like that. But in my case, I want a sharp horn, so I will change it a little bit more here, and you know, this should be like that. I'll, I'll pause. I'm gonna pause the video and you know adjust myself here just a second. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see here, this is pretty much what I want. Remember that, you know, once you're, let me close this. Once you're satisfied with your uh, shape, you could always uh, as well, you know, press four, wireframe mode. As you can see here, click the curve, you know, if you can't see, you can, you know, drag in click and drag and then you, you know you can see the differences between the polygon and the curve then you can click on the curve and then you know press control control vertex and remember it doesn't matter if this is a polygon you can still sh you know change the shape or if you want you know and uh, i recommend that you try to do that on five you know and you toggle between four and five so you can you know see if you, if you actually get the sh uh, overall shape that you want and this is pretty much what I want, all right? So I'm going to just press Quill here and the polygon. And voila, we have our, you know, ba base mesh horn. Don't forget that once you're satisfied with this sh overall shape, you can also change it a little bit here. And, you know, if you click here, for example, I'm add, uh, add an edge loop. So when I smooth out preview, as you can see uh, it's rounder here. And you know, you could also, for example, put uh, an edge loop here. If you want your horn to be, you know, like this, same effect. And you can also, you know, select the vertexes here, right click, and then, you know, press R and scale it down. Oh, by the way, uh, the orientation is set to object. You can change like this to world. Let's, you know, maybe it should, you know, set a set object to, you know, to be maintain a loyalty to, if it, if it, to be, uh, have fidelity to the, to the way this curve is set up. So I can come here, scale it down, and then scale it down here a little bit as well. And then what you have is, you have a sharper. No better curve, but maybe you need to sharpen a little bit more, you know, to be really, really, really like this. And then you can you know, come here and change a little bit to, you know, to, to make the horn look more natural looking. But you know, there there's one problem with this method though, because if you do that, for example, and come here, best, and let's say you want to twist this, here's what you have. You have this problem here. The horn gets back to where it was. I'm gonna leave it like that, right? This is why I even you know added that you know, without 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 using this attribute editor. So, you know, let me explain a little bit here. This looks kind of weird. There you go. And then, you know, it's pretty much like that. Now, what it can also do, let me, you know, hide this for a little bit. I'm going to do Control H and I still have the curve here. 
What you could also do is, remember I said that the base of the polygon pretty much determines well, how your horn is going to be. You can come here, then go to channel box, and real quickly edit this, and then you can, you know, make it a pentagon. Make sure that, let me go to the top view. Press 5 to wire shade. Make sure that, okay, let me put this in a straight manner. Make sure that it's lining up as it should, you know, rotate 18, I guess, to be exact. So this point here will be more geometrical. geometrical. This uh, vertical here is going to line up with the curve. Then after that, what I can do it is I can go to the side, press forward to wireframe this, then rotate a little bit like this, right? Then what you can do is uh, come here and rotate so the curve, you know, gets to this point. It, it helps out to facilitate because, you know, for example, let's say that I pull like this and then I click the faces, come here, click this, come three to extrude, put the visions, see the problem? It's going to be up like this. So. Uh, let me redo these, you know, make sure it's following the right orientation so the curve is respected. And then don't forget that, you know, you, these two here, let me show you what I mean. These two verticals, uh, they are completely respected. For example, they do not change here. So let me say, let me see, let me see, show you what I mean. I come here, for example, to attribute editor, right? And if I go to, let's say that I want to go to taper zero, all right? I don't, I don't know if you can see, but I'm going back and forth between redo so I can see these two rolls here of verticals, they're not actual par, they were not there when I made the curve, so uh, Maya isn't going to taper then, they're just going to leave it alone, all right? So I have that in mind when making. Let me hide this again, I show this, because this is the original polygon, and it's not a real part of the extrusion, you know, along the line. So, uh, but let me, so you might want to leave this, um, you should change this here, yeah, rather. Uh, you might want to change the height, so it's like this. I, I like to leave in 0 0.5. You could always expand the radius to be like a chew, so it's bigger. You no, know, uh, some some horns look really really cool, or when their base are very tech and they go you know, extruding through the lining to finish real teen at the tip. So to give them more, you know, wild and more menacing. Uh, design thing, you can click this, extrude, you know, up the divisions, go to 25, and then, you know, we can taper this once again. You can come here, right, and click the poly extrude face, then see, you know, the result of the taper. Well, uh, this time, I like how the taper did it, so, just decreasing the taper did the job by itself, so we don't really need to change much here. But uh, you gotta understand something as well. Uh, when you when you preview the smoothing, you need to crease these lines, or you know, in Maya, as we do is uh, add some edge loops. You can always you know come here to uh, mesh tools and insert edge loop. But then you can click here, and then here's how what you do. You put on these lines, right, like this. So what this is going to do is, once Maya smooths this up, you know, adds the visions, what, what Maya is going to do is, oh, there's some edge loops here. Uh, the user, user doesn't want me to smooth that way. So it means they want to make these lines sharp. Okay, uh, just remember, there's already one this, this side, so it's this side here. Yeah, I, I kind of, you know, get this up. So, after you did all this, if you smooth preview, it looks like a really good horn looking, like this. 
and probably I should put one here too. Whoops, wrong place. There you go. And then go to object mode and look like this. And there you go. You can also twist it because you know, unlike the unlike the cylindrical shape, if you twist this, nothing really changes because it does, it's a round shape, but since this is a um, uh, pentagon base, as you can see, an extrude through the line, therefore it changes the all, all overall shape of the horn. What you can do is you can come here to twist, do like this, and there you go. You have a really good, you know, unicorn-like model. So uh, as you can see here, you can always uh, come here. What I like to do is you can, you, you know, uh, control, uh, press Control D. Actually, we do. What I do first is before doing that, I can come here to Polix to your face. I do twist, right? Then I do Control D to duplicate. And because the these so-called nodes uh, do not replicate when you duplicate, as you can see here, uh, you can't really change it anymore. But the original mesh, in the original mesh, you can. So you can could come. Here to extrude, plot the twist to zero, and voila! And I have both the non-twisted and the twisted horn, as you can see here. So it's pretty, pretty really good. Also, as the last thing, you can always make your own, um, you know, 3D basis for this. Uh, let me show, for example, 